We, the undersigned, feeling keenly the need of a home for our aged and infirmed, infirmed people, <coughs> do hereby petition our district conference through the Laverne Church of the Brethren to set up a committee or organization to raise a fund, select a location, and build a suitable home to properly house and care for the comfort and necessity and necessities of our aged members as soon as conditions permit. Martha Lear presented the petition to the local church council and it was sent on to the district conference with no change in wording. As I read through the 100 names, one name struck me and I thought, I think that person is still living. It was signed with her husband's initials, so I wasn't sure. I asked Lena Barnard on Sunday, and sure enough, Lena Barnard is the one person out of the 100 who signed that petition who is still living. She's been here at Hillcrest for 29 years. Ross Hanawalt's search for suitable land, 1947. At a special conference of the Church of the Brethren convened on February 15, 1947, delegates went on record as favoring the establishment of a home for the aged at the earliest possible date. A new person on the Hillcrest board by way of a replacement was J. Ross Hanawalt. Due to his longtime residence in Laverne and his familiarity with the area, Hanawalt was asked by the board to help find a building site. In Harry Brandt's History of Hillcrest, we find the following story of the purchase of that first land. <coughs> it was in his attempt to fulfill his assignment that Hanawalt made several efforts to see a certain Warren Crozier, the owner of a small lemon grove on a slight elevation of land to the northwest of Coons Park in Laverne. The actual encounter took place on an early April morning at farm shore time. 60 years ago this month. <coughs> the air was fragrant with the scent of orange and lemon blossoms, but these were not quite heady enough to bland out certain farm odors. <laughs> <laughs> For those were the days when thrifty families kept, still kept a cow. And besides his indifferent lemon grove, Mr. Crozier managed double use of his ground by running a chicken ranch. When Hanawalt finally located neighbor Crozier, it was to find the man busy milking the family cow. As recalled by the visitor, the dialogue between the two neighbors went about as follows. Good morning, Warren. You, Hanawalt? Well, how is your temperature today? My chicken business is not too good. Your hens not laying? It's the city. They don't want chickens in this part of town anymore. I think I'll move to some, some place like Padua Hills. <laughs> Besides, my hens would do better there. What becomes of your place here? I try to sell it. So you think you might want to sell it? Yes, I think I'll go down to Pomona this afternoon and put it in some agent's hands. You have a price on the place? 18000 Perhaps too much, but there will be some selling expense. But this. Hanawalt did some rapid mental arithmetic. Warren, since you've been speaking out so frankly, I'm telling you why I came here this morning. Well, I'm listening. I'm looking for a site on which to build an old folks home. Old folks home? Warren, there's a lot of old folks in our church, in our, uh, church here in Laverne, and think how many more there are in other churches in our district. At our last district meeting, it was voted to establish such a home at the earliest possible date. I have been asked to try to find a site for such a home. Sounds like a good idea. There are lots of old folks in Laverne. Hanwell, I'll tell you what I'll do. If your people mean business, I'll cut my price to $12,500. I'd like to help on your project. Mr. Crozier, can you give me a couple of days to see what I can do? Fair enough. I'll hold off listing that long. <coughs> Ross Hanawalt drove straight to Glendora to see Galen K. Walker, chairman of the Hillcrest Board, and shared the story with him. The two of them drove back to Laverne. After a brief meeting with Galen Ogden, pastor of the Laverne Church of the Brethren, 
Penrose and Walker hurried over to the First National Bank, where they co-signed a personal note to get the money needed to for the down payment on the Crozier site. In a matter of hours, the site was found, purchase money arranged for, and a deal consummated. Those six and one half acres became the site of what has been known as Hillcrest West, and today includes the properties inside of and circling Hillcrest Drive. October 1st, 1957, status of Hillcrest. An October 1 report of 1957 report of the board secretary, Mrs. Alice Brubaker, included the following information. As of the date of this report, there are 19 apartments, seven duplexes, one triplex, and seven private homes on the grounds. In addition, there are five private homes adjoining or near the original site. This amounts to 48 facilities for private living on the six and one half acre plot, and five on lots nearby. The dedication of Hillcrest West, fall 1958. Upon the dedication, a dedication of the Hillcrest Manor in the fall of 58, the report included the following. We now have 39 residents living in the manor, making a total of 106 persons living on Hillcrest properties. This is a happy community with a close-knit family spirit. Hillcrest Activities Council, elected by residents, is meeting the, need, the many needs of people by making interesting plans for the enrichment of their social, physical, and spiritual life. A 1978 report found in Louise Larrick's 40-year history of Hillcrest. In 1978, Administer, Administrator Smeltzer described the 40-acre Hillcrest campus. 14 acres leased to a plant nursery, 415 facilities, housing 465 people. The California Department of Health licensed the 65 beds in the skilled nursing area of Woods. July 1st, 1978, or the 12% increase in fees due to inflation and the increase in the minimum wage. The title, Hillcrest Happenings, was used for the monthly newsletter of the Activities Council. Hillcrest includes its neighbors. There are several ways that Hillcrest reaches out to include neighbors. One way is an invitation to membership on the board of directors who are responsible for the operation of Hillcrest. A number of former board members are now residents of Hillcrest. A second way neighbors are included is membership in the business associates. The beautiful carved doors for the key favorite chapel were made possible by this group of business friends of Hillcrest. Many of them also participate as sponsors for the Good Samaritan dinner. A third way of including neighbors is the possibility to become members of the Hillcrest Auxiliary, which began 37 years ago. One of the pictures on the leadership board was taken at the 10th anniversary of the Auxiliary, showing the first four people who had been president of the Auxiliary. It's the four women here on the lower right corner. Each fall, our country fair invites neighbors and friends of Hillcrest to the campus. Until 1967, it was called the Hillcrest Bazaar. Our Aquatic and Fitness Center now has programs available for senior members of the larger community. This allows us to share our facility while at the same time recovering some costs of operation. A different type of neighbor. From Harry Bryant's History of Hillcrest, written 40 years ago, there is the following description of a different kind of neighbor to our West. Long before Hillcrest was somebody's brainchild, there were palms growing along the east side of Fiery Avenue, now, and this was 1967, averaging 90 feet in height. Fiery Avenue is now known as Wheeler. Who planted them there? We were may never know as they are very old, even if one figures their age at the rate of one foot of growth per year. But it may not have been that much, for these ancient palms were planted in an unfriendly, 
hard soil. Also, they were planted along a street that in winter served as a channel for flood water out of Marshall Canyon. Hmm. Somehow that single line of sentinel palms along Fiery managed to survive. And today they still gallantly lift their fronded heads to the winds that blow while disdainfully waving their ragged leaves to passers-by. Is it any wonder that hillcresters look up to admire their palms, even refer to them as the Twelve Apostles, or there are actually that many palms? Yeah. In July 1947, 60 years ago, Hillcrest was incorporated. Also, 60 years ago this July, Leona Sheridan was 45 years old. <laughs> This July, Leona will be 105 years young, and she has been a resident at Hillcrest for 38 years. This truly is a remarkable retirement community. As we enter our 61st year, we are enjoying new facilities, including Pinecrest, the expanded dining room, the aquatic fitness center, and Birch Court and we eagerly await the opening of the Village Center at Maple Court. It is important that we all take advantage of new walking paths and halls and make an effort to become better acquainted with the nooks and crannies of an ever-expanding Hillcrest campus. As construction begins on the Hawthorne Avenue homes, we await yet another neighborhood in our Hillcrest community. 